All right, well, we are continuing our tour through Normandy and we've been to Omaha Beach and we've been to Utah Beach. But there's one spot that we have yet to see and it's right in between the two. It's the highest point between Omaha and Utah and in history has gone down as a place of lore for the U.S. Army Rangers. We are at Point du Hoc. All right, so here is Point du Hawk, and right off the bat, you can see we've got a little Tobruk right here with a massive shell crater right next to it. Now, we're gonna see a little bit of it later, but uh, Point du Hawk housed six 155 millimeter guns, both of which could reach Omaha and Utah Beach. So this became a place that was very, very important to the U.S. military planners as far as taking out those guns. Now, I've been here once before, and whenever I was here, you could go explore all in through this area, but now, for some reason, they've got it fenced off, so that's too bad. But, but we're gonna get in there and take a look and see what we can anyway. Now, in April of 1944, the U.S. Army Air Force launched a huge bombing operation of Point de Hoc to try and neutralize these guns. And after that bombing raid, the Germans actually moved the guns out of this area, but military planners didn't know it. Well, here is one of many shell holes from that bombing operation. And then here's another one right behind me. And all of Point du Hoc is just completely covered in these shell holes. I can't even imagine being on the receiving end of all of that. So what we're looking at right here is a German anti-aircraft bunker. So there would have been a flat gun mounted right there. And again, they've got a lot of this fenced off, unfortunately, so that you can't really get access to it. Uh, now after D-Day, when the Rangers took this area, uh, this became the U.S. Army Rangers command post and uh, also served as a medical aid station and a morgue. Okay, so here is one of the 155 millimeter gun emplacements that uh, the Germans had here on Point du Hoc. They had four casemates that were already built and this is this is one of the open gun emplacements right here. So it's a little bit breezy up here on the point as one might expect but at 7 30 in the morning or a little after on June 6th companies D, E, and F of the 2nd Ranger Battalion landed here at Point du Hoc using ladders and grappling hooks ascended 90-foot cliff and assaulted the gun positions here at the point and that happened right here pretty amazing now after the Rangers moved in and found that the guns were missing they established uh, a perimeter and then moved further to the south ended up finding the guns, taking them out, and then moved back here to the point and had to hold out for two days before they got reinforcements. Just unbelievable how brave these men were. <clears throat> All total, out of the Rangers that fought here at Normandy on D-Day, over half were either killed or wounded within the first two days. 
And here we are out on the far end of the point. This is the Ranger Monument on top of the observation bunker that's set furthest out. It says to the Heroic Ranger Commandos, the 2nd Ranger Battalion, under the 116th Infantry, who under the command of Colonel James E. Rudder of the 1st American Division attacked and took the position of Point Du Hoc. Very cool. Maybe we should hope against the odds. Maybe favor plays our cards. The time is now and never cease to change. The time it gives you more than you can make. Oh, oh. So here's a decent view of the cliffs from the western side of the point. And my gosh, I can't even imagine how those guys did it. Golly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop down into this bunker. Quite a few people here today, so I imagine we'll run into a few down here. But this is the observation bunker on the front end of the point. So again, we've we've seen that before. A little defensive position on the inside. All right, so here's another couple rooms in the bunker. A little bit dark in here, so it's kind of hard to see but you can get a little bit of an idea of what it looks like in here. Huh. Okay, so uh, I'm inside the front end of the observation bunker here. So this is where uh, Germans would have been positioned with machine guns uh, to try and assault the, the rangers that were climbing the cliffs and also to be watching for for ships out on the channel but man how in the world did they do it Okay, so here's an example of one of the casemates that the Germans made for the 155 millimeter gun. And you can see this one took quite the pounding on D-Day. See all that rebar sticking out. But uh, by the time the Rangers got here, of course, as we've already mentioned, the guns were already gone. And we are starting to get some rain. All right, so what we're looking at here is a 20-man personnel bunker that the German soldiers would have used to house the troops. And you can see up on top, it's got one of these Tobruks that we've seen quite often that uh, you would have had a machine gunner or observation individual there. Interesting. Okay, so again, here's another one of these casemates, and you can see that this one has had a lot of damage taken to it. And if you look right here at this spot, let me come around, you can see where a naval gun took a huge chunk out of the corner of this casemate. 
and the hole is right there. So if you ever come to Point de Hawk, this particular casemate is uh, on the western end. All right, well that was Point du Hawk. So there was quite a few people here today. One observation that I made that I think is worth mentioning is whenever I was in the observation bunker, there was a, a family in there and they had a little girl that was maybe 11, 12 years old. And here we are at Point du Hawk. And I looked at this girl and she's got her face buried in a phone playing some goofy video game right here at Point du Hawk. I don't know, it was, it was just kind of a shame. It made me sad. But that's why we're making these videos. We want people to see history, we want people to appreciate history and uh, learn from it. And then whenever you have an opportunity to go to places like this, well, maybe you can be a little bit better informed and have a little bit more appreciation for the sacrifices and for the, the things that happened. But uh, anyway, that was Point du Hawk. Incredible place. Um, could spend, I could spend all day here, but uh, we have other places to be.